Hamilton Arts Council serves arts communities within the greater Hamilton area and the traditional territories upon which it sits, including Ancaster, Dundas, Flambro, Glanbrook, Hamilton, Stony Creek, Waterdown, and Six Nations of the Grand River. We acknowledge that the area we serve is situated upon the traditional territories of the Erie, Neutral, Huron-Wendat, Haudenosaunee, and Mississaugas. This land is covered by the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Belt Covenant, which was an agreement between the Haudenosaunee and Anishinaabek to share and care for the resources around the Great Lakes. Hamilton continues to be home to many indigenous people from across Turtle Island, North America, and we recognize that we must do more to learn about the rich history of this land so that we can better understand our roles as residents, neighbors, partners, and caretakers. Hamilton Arts Council's mission is to advocate for the arts as integral to a healthy community and provide inclusive opportunities to build connection and sustainability. So one of the ways in which we do this is through our professional development series. Explore all of the sessions that we're offering this year, which includes project budgets for beginners and crafting compelling statements for funding applications. This is presented in partnership with the Tourism and Culture Division of the City of Hamilton. You can visit our website to register for those sessions and more, which will also be in the chat now once it's published. So without further ado, um, introducing Andrea Carvalho, Policy Analyst for Grants with the City of Hamilton. Welcome, Andrea, I'll pass it over to you. Thank you so much. Uh, welcome everyone, and thank you to the Hamilton Arts Council for inviting me today and setting up uh, today's session. I'm happy to open up their professional development series uh, <clears throat> with today's session on the Arts Creation and Presentation Fund for Artists. This is one of my favorite funding streams that uh, I manage in the city. Uh, <clears throat> I also want to thank everyone who's registered today. Um, thank you for making time to attend uh, the session. I hope that it offers you a good understanding of the City Enrichment Fund in general and how uh, you can apply to this funding opportunity uh, from the city. It's, it's one of the reasons that it's my favorite is that um, when it launched in 2016, it was the very first time that the city committed to annual funding towards artist projects. We do fund um, artist projects in many different ways, but this is an annual program um, that continues to evolve year after year. Uh, I welcome you to leave questions in the chat box as Megan had um, indicated. One of the things that I also like to do is uh, record, write down, or transcribe the uh, questions and provide responses in writing after the session. Uh, we'll do our best to get to all of the questions, but if we don't, uh, please know that I will respond to you in writing uh, and we'll share that with everyone so we can benefit uh, collaboratively. Um, I also want to say that um, I want you to know that it's my job to help and support you as artists applying to this fund. So I encourage you to reach out to me at any time with questions about the process or just to talk about your project. It's my job to help you and I want to help make your application as successful as possible. So with that, uh, we're going to uh, today to talk about the City Enrich Enrichment Fund overall, details on the creation and presentation stream. Uh, we're going, I'm going to show you a few examples of the questions that you'll see in the application so you get a sense of what you're asked for uh, if you do decide to apply. Um, we're going to look at how to apply uh, online. I won't go too into too much detail there. Um, but I'll point some resources towards you. Uh, and in between some of the areas of this session, we're going to just pause and look at some previously funded projects uh, in the session or through this stream. It allows me to stop talking for a minute uh, for everyone just to have something uh, tasty for their eyes to look at and then helps us to just move on to the next one. And of course, we will uh, end with a Q&A. Thank you. Slide it in. Uh, so this slide shows us the uh, overall city enrichment fund program. Uh, we, this is a corporate wide 
funding program. As I said, it's an annual program that funds uh, not-for-profit organizations primarily, with the exception of you. This is the only stream that funds artists and individuals. So otherwise, this program funds uh, many sector areas. So agriculture, as you can see, environment, sports and active lifestyles, our community and health services areas, and of course, arts and culture. Slide, please. So here is a breakdown. And I just want to focus on this for a little bit to show you how much or how many different areas, of course, we do fund. Um, and then the one area, the one stream that we're talking about today is the one that circled, um, it's the creation and presentation stream. And again, it's the only one that funds artist projects directly. I want to point this out because you'll see when you apply um, online that much of the language and the speak of the application, it's speaking towards organizations uh, and discusses programs. And it's because we share a lot of the tools or I, with the other areas of the city enrichment fund. So when the application um, asks about an organization, in this case, we're really asking about you and the artist. So we have to, uh, or you, you are asked to um, replace that those words for artists and program for projects. So as I had said before, the creation and presentation stream is quite unique. Its objective is to provide uh, opportunity for artists to create new work and to enhance public exposure to a body of work that will build and or strengthen their careers and enhance the creative profile of the city of Hamilton. This funding stream provides project grants to artists and collectives who have an arts practice in any discipline for the creation of new artistic work and its public presentation in Hamilton and further afield. Um, as I had said, it's open to all disciplines. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit later about um, some of the choices, but really it's all disciplines, all matters of practice, um, <clears throat> interdisciplinary, community-based. Uh, we really do fund and we have funded many different um, approaches to art making in the past. And as I said, individual artists and collectives. Um, I wanna say that the fund was created specifically to develop the, uh, to, to fund the development of new work or the presentation of previously completed work, but the presentation of this work in a new format or different way. So we want to fund projects that are central to your practice that support your artistic growth. Um, and we want to see how this project either helps develop your career or as a stepping stone, we're looking for projects that are really important to, to you. Okay, slide please. Okay, I just wanna pause here on the timeline and process so that um, kind of know what to expect if you do decide to apply. Applications are due November 2nd at 4.30. Uh, once we receive the applications, we process them to ensure that all of your support material is working. All of the answers are, um, excuse me, all of the questions are answered that there hasn't been a glitch, to, a glitch in our online program. We wanna ensure that your application is complete before we send it to the jury. Um, the adjudication phase happens in January and February. And then from there we, um, process all of the applications and prepare this for a report that goes to council. Um, we do recognize that this is a long process because typically applicants don't receive um, announcements on their application until May and June. Um, this is partially because we have uh, over 300 applications uh, across the city enrichment fund to work with, uh, but also because we're always waiting on council to approve the budget for that year. And um, it's a strange place, but the budget isn't typically approved until spring. 
So we're one of the first groups that gets in um, that is, is uh, in the timeline to have our um, program approved and to release funds. So just so that you know, if you do apply, um, that you would typically hear from us in May and June about the results of your application. Okay, slide please. Okay, here, I just wanna show you some of the um, data on this funding stream um, <clears throat> so that you can see how the funding stream has evolved uh, since launching six years ago. I'm pretty pleased to share that we're able to support approximately half of the applications we receive. Some years it's a bit less and some years it's a bit more. Um, as you'll see last year, of course, we funded all but one application uh, that came in. Um, and while we saw a lower number of applicants that came in last year, we funded nearly all of them, uh, raising the total amount funded towards artist projects since 2019. Um, the reason that I like to show this data with potential applicants with you is that it shows to you that the ratio of projects funded is generally high and that our goal is to support more and more artists each year. In other words, we want you to be successful and we want to spend money on artists. It's, our, it's the intent of this funding stream um, and it's my goal that this, this funding stream remains healthy, that the funding envelope um, can remain high and that we can fund um, great projects that we see come through uh, this funding stream. I also just want to note that while the funding um, that we have to spend in the arts program, um, that's a fixed amount that we receive every year. But within our arts program, the funding towards each area remains flexible. Um, and it just means that we can adjust the number each year, as you can see, right? The number began quite high um, and then it moved down to you know, about 120,000, and it just changes a bit over year over year. It means that we're able to adjust the funding amount based on the number of applicants um, overall and both in the emerging and established categories. Um, I'll also say that we don't have a fixed amount that we wanna spend in emerging versus established or um, the other way around just that we, uh, we do separate the applications between emerging and established so that um, those applications are reviewed by an emerging peer group and an established peer group so that we don't have emerging applications being reviewed alongside those from established applicants. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, here's just a quick how to apply. If you are thinking of applying, uh, you should read the uh, general city enrichment fund guidelines, but more specifically, you should really focus on the creation and presentation handbook, which is available online and maybe we'll include a link for that um, either in the chat or in the post um, session email. Um, I will, you'll probably hear me say this a couple of times in today's session to use that handbook. And the reason I say that is because I've put in the, a copy of the application, all of the questions that are in the application and um, some kind of tips on how to respond to each of those questions. It'll allow you to respond and, and draft your application outside of the online program or online portal. Um, and so you'll have a really good um, kind of Coles notes to, to help you apply or to know if this is something that you're interested in. And again, uh, please contact me if you just wanna talk about your project, see if it's a fit or to flesh it out. I'm happy to, um, to meet with you. Um, and then of course, to plan for a November 2nd deadline. Uh, the last note here, it's, um, I just wanted to point out, I didn't find a great place in my presentation to include it. So if you are applying, um, I do want you to make a note of um, in, the, in your 
when you register online and when you begin to fill out your contact information to, um, if you have a public artistic name um, or a public name that might be different from your legal name, that you'll have to include both your legal name and public name. We will only publish your artistic or public na name, um, but in terms of if you are successful, we will be cutting the check to your legal name. We will be providing T4s in your legal name. So this is whether it's just public or your artistic name. So if you're in a band, you will be applying under your band name um, versus a legal name that someone will be kind of owning the grant, um, receiving the funds and taking care of it that way. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, this is just a visual break. Um, this is a, uh, a still image from a dance performance um, by John Henry Herrera um, called Black Tears, Lagrimas Negras. It was a dance project that was funded in 2016, our very first uh, funding year. This is performed um, at the, uh, on James Street. Um, no, I think it's a, where AGH used to have a space there. Now it's um, beauty salon, there's a bagel shop. Anyways, it was in a, um, in a transformed space downtown. Uh, next slide, please. So this is um, an example of a mural painting from Juliana Lachance um, in 2018. So this was an emerging artist project. It was a multi-mural um, project that we supported uh, that occurred through various public and private, uh, but private publicly accessible private spaces um, along Barton Street. Uh, next slide, please. So this is a studio shot of a body of work um, that we supported uh, by John Noose Hayden. It was a series of paintings um, that they later uh, presented in Hamilton and in St. Catharines, perhaps a few other places. It was a project from I think, 2016 as well. Okay, back to business. So <clears throat> who's eligible to apply to the um, creation and presentation stream? All practicing professional artists. Um, you must be a resident of at least 12 months in Hamilton. Um, have specialized training in your field. So specialized training does not mean that you must have a BFA or um, a college degree in your training. It could, you can have specialized training over a number of years through mentorship, through a workshop, through a series of courses. Um, but we are looking to fund artists who are developing their practice and who have been committed to it. Uh, the 18 years of age or older, um, projects must be presented within the city. The reason there's a little asterisk there is that I want to just pause um, and say that the projects that we are funding, we want to ensure that citizens in Hamilton have an opportunity to experience your work, but that doesn't always mean in a very formal uh, way. So, you know, when, if, if you're a visual artist and you're working on a new body of work, that doesn't mean that the presentation bit um, must be through a gallery exhibition. It could be through an open studio, um, a talk about your work or one piece might be shown in a group show. Um, if you're a theater uh, person putting on a show, you know, it doesn't mean the final production of that um, play, let's say it could be a first reading. You know, there are many different ways that I want you to think about how people in Hamilton will experience your project um, because it doesn't always mean the most kind of formal end piece. You know, let's say you're a writer. Um, it's very challenging, I think, for writers to think about this, but it could be a small piece where you're um, 
talking about the book, you know, through a different kind of organization or talking about um, projects in the books or, or having, excuse me, themes in the book or having a seminar about, um, about this piece that you're writing. So just to, to, to state our intention isn't always to have a formal presentation, but we just want to ensure that projects that the city funds um, can be accessible to the public. Um, if, if anyone is a City of Hamilton employee, just let me know um, and we'll have you sign a, a code of conduct disclosure form. Um, for collectives who are applying, each member of the collective must meet the definition of a professional artist. The majority of members must reside in Hamilton, so not everyone. Um, the collective is not required to be an incorporated body, uh, which just means you don't have to be a registered group. You could be a, a group of artists working together who have worked together for a number of years. Um, and just like any artist who is applying, the collective not the individual people. The collective as a one artistic unit is considered either emerging or established based on the number of years that they have presented publicly. Okay, next slide, please. So who's not eligible? Um, amateur or non-professional artists. So if your intention is not to ever show your work publicly, um, but you still really enjoy making work, but you don't intend to um, engage the public with your work, then this might not be the um, funding stream for you. Full-time students are not eligible. Uh, managers and agents, curators alone are not eligible. We wanna fund artists um, directly. If the artist is, has a dual role as you know, manager or artist slash curator, different um, and we certainly will uh, support projects that pay a manager or curator um, but we want the applicant themselves to be the artist who is um, driving this project. Um, if you are an artist or collect collective that was successful last year you'll just have to wait in the next year to apply. So we want to give Artists, the artistic community in Hamilton, the opportunity to receive funds. So we are, do not fund um, the same artist year over year. There's kind of a one year waiting period. And of course, projects that have been funded by the City and Richmond Fund uh, through this stream previously is not eligible. I'm happy to say that this list is much shorter. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, what do we fund? Now we know who we fund. Uh, we fund, again, established artists and emerging artists. Um, if you are an emerging artist applying, the maximum funding that you can apply for is $5,000 and establish 10,000. We, um, we see a number of different uh, expenses in a budget or in a project, it's really, what we see coming through your budget is really so varied because everyone's artistic process um, and projects are quite different. Uh, but in general, we have um, some ineligible um, expenses. Sorry, I did say that admin manager and agents are, they are certainly eligible um, as a kind of support of the project, but we want to avoid um, spending, uh, or excuse me, um, we want to avoid supporting kind of yearly costs, which is where the manager agent and admin comes in. But if it's a one-time project that has a beginning and an end date, those things are eligible. Um, I'm just going to go through the ineligible expenses first. So expenses normally assumed by a presenting organization so um, the example here would be if you are a visual artist and you have been invited to show this body of work um, at a public gallery, that public gallery, um, that public gallery typically 
um, is funded in order to support projects and to pay for things like marketing of that exhibition. They are going to give you an artist fee. We will still certainly encourage you to pay yourself in addition to that through us. Um, but you know, creating a catalog for that exhibition are costs that public, publicly funded institutions would normally already have budgeted in. Um, public commission work. So if this is a um, public art piece that again has their own has an own their own budget towards it um, that typically wouldn't come through this stream. Um, completed projects. So if your project is complete, we don't retroactively fund projects. Um, academic residencies. Again, that's because the expectation is that that um, institution should already have a fee uh, set aside for um, inviting you to be their, their resident, their artistic residents. Um, or fundraising based projects. So many artists may do fundraising to help um, help a project uh, materialize. That's separate. If you're, if you're, if this project is just fundraising, um, is, is intent is to fundraise for something, that's something we don't fund. Um, so things that we do like to, or things that we do see as eligible expenses are production, technical costs, renting of a space or studio space, practice space. Um, if your project requires you to equip, uh, purchase new equipment, um, there's a maximum $2,000 per piece that, um, that you can include in the budget travel costs within Ontario, and that includes um, things like daily per diems. You know, if you're traveling to do research or to work with someone in a different city, don't forget to include the cost to travel there, stay there, but also feed yourself each day when you're there. All of those small costs um, can really add up in a budget. Uh, and then, of course, your artist remuneration, what you're going to pay yourself um, as you work on this project. And then I think I skipped over one. Oh, yes, residency costs. So this is a residency other than from an academic institution. So anything outside of universities or colleges where you may be going on a residency. Um, this is totally eligible. Um, because it's time that you are putting aside for uh, to dedicate to your practice and, and this project. Um, please send us a letter of confirmation. It'll help support your application. Um, yeah, so think about if there's a residency that might align with this project, um, that's certainly something you can include uh, within your budget and within this um, project. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, <clears throat> so these are the four main, or the four areas, things that you should prepare for um, in your application. It's the application itself, the application narrative, this is when you are writing about your project. Um, you're going to be sending us your artist statement and bio, um, your, a description of your project and the plan. Uh, again, there's a copy of the application. Each question that you're asked to uh, respond to is in the handbook. Use it as a tool to help you really think about and plan um, or prepare for the application. So the second piece is the budget. Um, I am happy to help anyone who uh, would like to talk about their budgets or how to prepare the budget um, for this, this um, application. We're really looking at budgets that, and this is something that the jury always comes back to, budgets that are realistic and that reflect the project as you've just described it within your application. Those two things are really what the jury um, thinks about when they look at your budget. You know, is this realistic? Is this going to help them really um, succeed with their project? Like have they kind of under budgeted? Um, 
and uh, or all the pieces that they've described included in the budget. When those two things match, typically the jury is really um, is really looking forward or really wants to support a project because it demonstrates that you've you know your your stuff you've really thought about your project and how to execute it so your support material this is examples of your work um, we we accept um, <clears throat> examples of your work in many different formats so text space for for if you're writers or um, a songwriter images sound files video files it really depends on what your practice is. Um, the online program that we use accepts almost all formats. When you go to, to um, upload your support material, it'll have a list for you. Um, and again, if you're having any tech issues, just give me a call. Um, and of course, a, a corresponding list of your support material so that the adjudication team can follow along and match um, each piece to the example that you've given us. And of course your CV, so your artistic uh, resume. Um, and again, for a collective, we're looking for one CV that represents the history of work from that collective, not the CV for each artist in that collective. Um, <clears throat> and then of course, this is optional for you, but you can include um, additional support material that supports your application. For some, it might be press packages. You've had reviews written of previous um, pieces or projects that you've put together. You can certainly include those things. Um, the jury takes a lot of time to review your application, look at your uh, support material um, so they can really understand who you are as an artist um, and what and how this project will help support your, your practice. So these are just suggestions for the um, additional project material. Um, we'll, we leave it up to you to tell us, you know, and to show us uh, more about your work. Okay, next slide, please. So I'm just going to jump into the application. Uh, I didn't include all of the questions in the application because I said, as I had said before, it's already in the handbook. The handbooks can be accessed through the um, City of Hamilton's City Enrichment Fund webpage. It lives on that webpage year round. So you can see um, all of the eligible details within this funding stream. And again, a copy of the application. So you can use that as your uh, writing and preparing. But typically these are some of the, most of the questions that you're asked. Um, you know, just to provide your artist statement, your artist bio. These are really brief, um, small sections. Um, a, a brief summary of your program. This is something that we take out of your application and we publish it within the um, City Enrichment Fund report that goes to council for approval. There is actually in the handbook a format that you can follow. It's written in the third person. It's very high level. Um, we're not asking you to spend extra time kind of drafting this thing. We're giving you a format that you can, you can use. Um, and then the next question, the provided detailed description of your program. This is again where project, the language of the application, you'll see it's really um, mostly written for organizations. So this is when we're taught, we, you hear program, you're really thinking of your project. This question is where I think you'll spend more, most of the time talking about your project. It's where we've given you a lot of space within the application to tell us everything that you can. I generally uh, recommend that applicants think about when, they're, when you're talking about your project, to think about it, think about presenting it in two ways, um, two ways together. So the first to describe, you know, the artistic elements. Why are you doing this project? From where does it come? Um, you know, tell us more about the impetus. You know, what's the inspiration for it? What does this mean for you or for your practice overall? 
Um, so if you spend some time talking about the artistic description of it, and then spend some time telling the jury, telling everyone what the plan is to execute. So one is really using um, the artistic lens. And then the other section is thinking about it logistically. You know, I want to spend six months focusing on this project. Um, the first two, I'm going to be writing this play. And then, you know, I'm going to be working with this team to develop um, the stage components and then this amount of time will, will be in rehearsals so that you're really breaking it down and demonstrating to the adjudication team that you you know how to execute this project. Of course, some projects are about exploration, right? So, but if you can think about, you know, I wanna spend um, this amount of time in the studio uh, working through these concepts, working through these themes to develop these new pieces. So um, this is where you can provide a bit of the timeline. If your location is really important to your project, you know, if this is a film or video um, based project, that might be irrelevant. So this is a place to describe and talk about why it is, um, who you're going to be working with if you are, you know, who's on this team, who are you collaborating with, or who are you hiring to help execute um, your project. So. So really it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good way, I think, to show the jury, you know, why your project is really important. You know, what, why is it important to your practice? Why is it important to your artistic um, field? And then, you know, how will this, how will this project materialize? How, um, how will it come together? So some of the other questions um, that you'll be asked to respond to are, you know, how will people experience your project? We talked about this a bit earlier. Um, and then one thing, and then one of the other questions that uh, the application asks for you to think about is how will this project um, advance your own practice? You know, how does it contribute to the artistic field that you work in? And how does this project help you develop um, as an artist, you know, or, or within your practice? Uh, next slide, please. Uh, I wanted to include this. This is another question that comes up in the application. And I wanted to include it here um, just to provide you with some examples. I think because it's a bit different than um, what you might encounter in artist project applications through the Ontario Arts Council or uh, the Canada Council. It's one where we ask you to describe your outcomes for the project. So essentially, what are the goals that you might have? Um, you're asked to provide only one or two, so not too many. Here I've given you uh, four examples, but it's asking you to think about um, the goal from your project, and how will you measure that goal to know that you've been successful um, and what that, what um, achieving this goal, how it impacts your work overall. So I'll just uh, go through just a couple of these um, goals. Uh, one could be to produce a new body of work, five to eight pieces um, in my studio. Um, and so the measure of this is to create that those number of pieces. And I'll know I'm successful when I've completed that, when I've created like five new works and that I've been able to take these new pieces and apply to galleries to show my work um, both locally and regionally. So it's a bit of a different, or at least for me as an artist, um, it's a bit of a different switch when I'm thinking about my work to approach um, projects with, with this kind of outcomes focus. Um, so so I, I welcome you to uh, review these examples or to just think about it this way. Um, another example could be um, to publish a novel. So if the project is about writing a new book or short stories, um, perhaps it's about completing that book um, and sending it out to a number of publishers and securing one contract 
or maybe it's about having three callbacks. You know, these goals don't have to be uh, really lofty. They, we want them to be achievable for you. Um, so we don't, we're not looking for goals that are really impressive. We just want goals that really relate to your project and that are realistic. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so the budget is, is just another um, area within the application. There are more details that you can find in the handbook, but essentially the budget um, is broken up in these four parts. So one is your revenue, right? Where you would put the Sydney Enrichment Fund um, application or the, the amount of funds that you're requesting from us. Um, and any other places that you might be requesting funding from, uh, expenses for your project. So everything that you've described in your project, um, the jury will look for those things to be expensed or to come up in your, in your budget. In kind, um, if you are trading artistic services or are bringing, you know, you know you're gonna be using uh, material from your studio that you purchased two years ago. And then of course, budget notes. So there's a place within the budget form to provide just really point form um, notes about any expense or revenue items listed. It helps give, it helps um, be really clear in your application or your budget here. Um, and it's another sneaky way to add some information. So if you have, um, you know, artist fees, it's a way to say, you know, this is a breakdown of these four dancers that I am, um, you know, four dancers times X amount. So that, again, it's reinforced that you're working with a team of yourself and, you know, these other people that you're hiring. Uh, one thing that's really important to note is that um, the city enrichment fund, so whatever amount of money you are requesting from us, it could only represent up to 30% of your overall budget. So if you are an established artist and you're going to apply for around $10,000, you don't have to apply to the maximum amount. You can apply to anything um, up to the maximum. Um, so if you're an established artist and your project, um, your project is whatever your project is, you want to apply up to the maximum 10,000 amount. Um, that typically would mean that your overall budget would be around $30,000. So the city enrichment fund grant um, can only be 30% of the budget overall. So when you're thinking about your budget, you're thinking of uh, where else can I apply to receive funding um, to help uh, have a very fulsome budget. Okay, next slide, please. So I included this here um, because this is a new thing that you will see. If you've applied to the City Enrichment Fund before, um, these questions are new this year. Uh, they're questions around equity, diversity, and inclusion. And they are for the City Enrichment Fund program to gather data on um, our applicants and the, uh, the programs that we are funding in the community. So one important thing to note is that these questions and the way you respond are not scored. They are not uh, reviewed by the adjudicators and they do not impact the result of your application at all. It's, re it's really just a way for us to have a better understanding of, um, of how our program, the City Enrichment Fund, performs within uh, the community. So that's why I'm putting them here. And I want to also note that one is optional, the very first one. Um, again, this really is, a, is for organizations. So it's really not relative to artists and collectives. And then the second one is, um, it is mandatory within the, the online program, so it won't let you continue. Um, so you do have to respond to it. Um, 
so the question is in an effort to ensure city enrichment funds are better serving local community needs, please identify the target population for the specific program, your project for this application, and please check all that apply. Um, so there is a long list of different uh, communities and communities of interest that your program or your project um, might hope to engage with. There's also one where there is no specific target audience, but you have the option to um, select all that apply for your project. Okay, slide please. Okay, just a couple more um, notes on the process and then we're gonna have a visual break. Uh, so, so I just wanted to show you um, how an application is reviewed, what the criteria, that this is the exact criteria we give to the adjudicators. So um, once we give them the application, this is the um, criteria that we ask them to look for in each application. So the first area, artistic direction, um, we're really looking at um, the strength of your project, uh, the quality of the plan. Again, this is, this is a great project. Have they also shown us how they're going to execute it and that um, it's realistic? You know, will, will we see this project materialize within the year? Um, so the jury is looking for all of this, um, including, you know, the support material, they're going to look at the art project and artistic merit. Uh, they want to ensure that uh, this project, by funding this project, it, it is going to help develop your practice um, and enhance your practice in some way. Um, they're also asked to consider how this project contributes to your artistic field overall and Hamilton's artistic community. Um, and again, how this um, advances your practice. Next slide, please. Okay. So just to talk a little bit about what our jury looks like. Um, every year we invite, uh, we have two different jury teams for this um, funding stream, for the creation and presentation funding stream. We have one that reviews the um, applications from established artists and one that reviews applications from emerging artists. Um, we ask, when you are in the application, we ask for you to identify the discipline that you're applying under. Um, and it does. we ask that for two reasons. One is to, um, help direct you to tell you how many pieces of support material to provide to us. You know, there's a limited number of images we can receive from um, visual artists versus um, sound and video files um, from musicians. So it's for that reason. And also so that we have a good understanding of what artistic areas are represented in the applications so that we can create a jury that matches those artistic disciplines. So for instance, if we don't have any applications for musicians, we wouldn't invite a, a musician to sit on our jury. Uh, because each, because uh, disciplines are reviewed together, we have a jury team that comes from different artistic communities. Um, so we might have a team that's made up of one theater person, a literary, um, a writer, and a visual artist. Um, so that would mean that within that pool of applications, we have some applications for writing projects, visual art, um, and theater. We do our best to represent each discipline on the jury. Um, but sometimes there are so many different disciplines that we can't. So we, we do our best to do that. Um, if, you, if your practice is interdisciplinary or community-based art practice, um, we certainly fund those projects and have in the past, uh, but we just don't have every type of discipline listed. Uh, so we just ask that you do your best to select one. 
Uh, so in my time uh, managing the, this uh, funding stream, uh, the jury I found really is looking for a lot of details in your application. They really want to know about your project. Um, I find when a jury gets an application where it's really general or kind of high level writing, um, it doesn't give them enough information for them to want to support an application. Um, they're really looking for that detail so that they can understand the artistic elements, they can understand how this is important to your practice um, and how this will really be a great project. Uh, they're really looking for clear, simple language. Remember that uh, you might be a musician, but a theater artist might also be reviewing and likely there are artists from other areas that are reviewing your application. So while it's a jury made up of artists, they come from different um, disciplines and backgrounds. So simple and clear direct language um, is always welcomed. Um, to provide your in information on your artistic intent. So again, this is what is the impetus, what's driving you to make this work, to be really clear about that. Um, and, you know, why are you doing this? Why is this your next project? If you're collaborating or working with a team or hiring someone to help execute your project, uh, it's good to, of course, of course mention them. But if there's a specific reason why you're working with this person, because they're a master sound technician, you know, you, they're so well known for this type of sound and you really want to work with them on your next recording. Um, that's, that's your reason. And that's the reason that should be, should come through in your application. Um, and of course, to provide as much uh, information as you can and around the planning um, and, you know, what's driving this project. Um, our jury changes, our adjudication team, excuse me, changes year to year. So um, one thing that I'm asking uh, for you, if you'd like to sit on the jury, please let me know. Or if there's anyone that you recommend to sit on the adjudication team, um, please let me know. I'm always looking for um, both experienced and non-experienced adjudicators to help um, evaluate and look through uh, these applications, and we always ask for feedback about our program overall. Um, it, it is a pay, there's an honorarium that goes towards um, our adjudicators. So um, there's a, a little bonus. Just, just let me know. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, and a pause. Whew. So so here's a, a good example of a uh, interdisciplinary project. This is from the Hamilton Aerial Group. So I don't even know if I would define them as a dance group um, because they work a lot in costuming and sound, um, primarily maybe a movement group. But this is a project from a few years ago. Um, uh, down at Princess Point, where they invited, they worked with a number of different artists and created several stations where um, their group and invited participants were performing. And the audience moved through these performances and through a kind of natural landscape of Princess Point. Um, right, but I'm showing it to you today as um, a good example of a collective that we funded and uh, interdisciplinary uh, kind of practices. Next slide, please. So this was, I think this is one of our first projects funded as well. It was a video project um, from Vanessa Crosby Ramsey. And it was where uh, they were looking at uh, different practices and how different artists worked. And they were recording that, um, those processes in a video project. It was pretty great. Um, so this 
I don't think the year is right on this one, but uh, this is an illustration or an illustrative comic book. So this is both kind of visual art and writing uh, from Sylvia Nickerson, who's a, um, a local artist who also, I think, created an installation for this piece. This is a one, one part of a three-part book that she had been working on. Um, and so we funded the first part. So the first of three chapters. Um, yeah, and the project overall consisted of <clears throat> the writing, the drawing, and then she also added an installation. Um, yeah. Next slide, please. So this um, was from 2019. This is Abadar Kamgari's um, exhibition and performance that happened. Uh, so Abadar is a visual artist who's um, a performer, works in many different disciplines or def many different materials. Um, this was done in 2019. So this is an exhibition where she worked with community to create the work. Okay, great. Next slide, please. Okay, so to apply online, um, I, I'm not presenting to you today a kind of a, a page by page on how to get online um, because we do, there is a video that always sits on the City Enrichment Fund webpage that will show you how to navigate the online portal. Uh, but again, if you are ever experiencing any issues, just please give me a call and I'm happy to also walk you through it. Um, so to access, the online portal, you would go onto the city website um, or the funding, uh, community funding um, page, or you can just type in the search bar city enrichment fund and it'll bring you right to this page on the left. There you will find um, a copy of the handbook. So you would go to the art section, click on the art section and go down to the creation and presentation. Um, I think that Megan, included a link in the chat, so it's there, thank you. Um, but otherwise you can find it online. So to submit an application to begin an account, you would go um, and find this blue bar, this is complete the CEF application. It'll take you to a different um, webpage where you would begin a different portal. And uh, that's where you would create your account. Um, you can store all of your things in there. Some people like to, because you have all of the application questions, some people like to draft their application um, in a different, like in a Word document and then copy and paste it later into the um, online portal. Um, it's really up to you. You can begin an application, um, go through and add things and edit um, and save as you go. And then decide to uh, to submit later on. So so it gives you time and flexibility that way. You don't have to log in, start, and end an application in one sitting. You will have the opportunity to leave um, and then return to it later. So again, this is also where you will find a video my colleague has prepared, show you a step by step on how to get through. Um, and another a new thing this year is that um, should you like we are able to translate the application into the language of your choice. Um, this is, I'm very happy to share this with you. I'm very happy that we offer it this year. Um, so if this is something that's of interest to you, uh, please let me know and we'll begin that translation uh, for you and get that application to you. Um, and then again, you can contact myself. At the last slide, I'll have my contact information um, and my colleague, uh, Mimi John, our grant coordinator. She looks after the entire city enrichment fund. So she'll be able to help um, if you're stuck, something isn't working online and you can't reach me, um, you can always connect with her. Uh, last, next slide, please. So just some general tips is to, um, Go through the grant program, read those guidelines, have that handbook with you. Um, contact me at any point. 
uh, a lot of people that I've worked with in the past, uh, we've been, you know, sharing, sharing their project with me. And as someone who's listening and hearing it for the first time, you know, I can be able to ask questions. Well, what about this? What about this expense? Is this something that's related to it? Uh, sometimes if you're, because you are so close to that project, sometimes it's, it's nice to have um, a kind of outside perspective. And this isn't just for me, but for anyone else, uh, you can of course share your project, but if you'd like to talk to me about it um, and see if it's a right fit or see how it would fit within the program, please give me a call. Um, another tip of course is to draft, save, edit um, your document or your application somewhere else if that, if you find working in that way helpful. That's why we have the handbook and a copy of the application for you. Um, and of course, to do the same with your budget, the jury always, always looks for a budget that is realistic, that is well-planned, um, that's balanced, and that reflects all of the things that you've included in the application narrative. Like if you talk about working with a sound studio, but there isn't the expense for that in your budget, then they start to see kind of holes uh, throughout your application and you wanna prevent that as much as possible. Um, when submitting your support material, look for really good examples of your work that demonstrate your practice or where your practice is evolving towards um, and that really show off the best parts of your, of your practice. Um, and you know, bring your project to your peers and ask them to review your application or um, to just sound off um, ideas with you. They're your peers, they're a great resource for you to tap into. Uh, next slide, please. And this is how you can reach me. Um, again, uh, please email me at any point. Um, I am happy to look at an example of your budget and to share my opinion with you. Um, again, it's my job to help make this process less painful or joyous, depending on where you're sitting, um, and to help make your uh, help you be as successful as you can throughout this process. I am not an adjudicator. I facilitate that process. I invite the jury uh, to come together to review the applications, but I don't have a role in evaluating your application. So this allows me to be very close with you in helping you prepare um, your application up until November 2nd. So please use me as a resource um, if you would like. 